Hello, I'm Richard Murphy and I want to talk about a technical issue which is, however, really important and which affects you every day. And that is, why do we have limited liability companies? Now, you trade with limited liability companies. They're the ones that have limited or LTD at the end of their name. And they're also the ones which have PLC, which stands for public limited company at the end of their name. So you go into any supermarket, literally any supermarket, and you're trading with a limited company or a public limited company. If you go to buy, for example, your electricity or gas or whatever else, you're trading with a limited company and so on and on. And many people who are watching who've set up their own businesses will also have chosen to put them in a limited company. What does it mean? It means that the owners of that company do not have to pay the debts of the business if it goes bust. The company doesn't have unlimited liability. Theoretically, it's the owners who have the unlimited liability. They don't have to make good the amount of money that the company has lost if it can't pay all its debts when it ceases to trade. Now that's a phenomenal benefit to those owners. They know that once they've paid for their shares in the company, and frankly these days all shares are fully paid, so once you pay for a share, you have no further contribution to make to the company as a result of your ownership of it, you can only obtain a benefit from then on in the way of a dividend, which is the return that a company pays to its shareholders. So a sh an owner of a limited company, once they pay for their shares, is on a one-way ticket. It's win all the way, nothing else to pay. Now, is that good news for society? Well, if this hadn't worked, it wouldn't still exist. Limited liability has existed since the time of Elizabeth I, but in its common current form really was created in the 1850s. And it's the consequence of the railway boom. The railways were built from 1830 onwards, and by the 1850s we needed literally to have companies available, off the shelf, easy to incorporate. And from then on, companies have been a normal part of trading life in the UK. What they let people do is bring their savings together, put them into a company, and let the company trade using their capital to create something which we hope is of worth for society. Now, small companies actually don't need much capital these days, large companies do, but the point is, it doesn't matter what the size of company, the benefit remains the same. The owners, once they pay for their shares, don't have to pay the debts when the company goes bust. So who does pay those debts when a company goes bust? Well, that's what are called the creditors of the company at that time. And who are the creditors? Very often the employees, of course, who may or may not get their wages at the time that the company ceases to trade. It could most certainly be the pensioners of the company because very often pensioners lose out when a company goes bust if it has run a pension scheme of its own. And the trade suppliers, that is the other companies from whom the company has bought things, also lose out. Plus the government, very often because tax, whether that's VAT or PAYE taxes owing, are unpaid when the company becomes insolvent. In other words, the private debts of the company become a cost to society at large. Now, why do we want to create a risk to everyone for the benefit of shareholders? It's a very good question which almost nobody now asks. And the only benefit from doing this is that we think companies add value to society. And overall, they do. I don't think there's any dispute in the world at large, that some companies are clearly beneficial to us. Hundreds, thousands, even millions of companies might be beneficial to us by bringing us the goods and services that we want. But there is still this risk and this cost. And the reason why I mention that risk and that cost is that there are ways of mitigating that. Because this is what is called a moral hazard. If one side stands to gain and can't really lose, the shareholders, the risk is that they will actually take more risk than they should and impose a greater cost on society. They'll take a gamble with other people's money in effect. And that's what a limited company can do. So there should be conditions attached. What are those conditions? Well, accounts on public record, because we need to know the risk we take when we deal with these companies. And by accounts, I mean the full accounts 
the profit and loss account telling us how big this company is, what its level of sales are, how much money it makes. Is it profitable? Is it therefore likely to have the cash available to pay us? And a balance sheet which tells us, has it got literally cash in the bank to make settlement of its liabilities as they fall due? We need that information and we need to know other information as well. Is it a good citizen? Does it pay its taxes? Does it pay people decent wages? How many people does it employ? What's their overall payment level? These things that help us determine whether this company is one we want to exist in our community. It helps us decide, do we want to risk trading with it? Because we take all the risk when we trade with a limited company and it takes remarkably little risk from trading with us. Limited liability is a good thing, but we have to attach a price to it. And that price is transparency, and that price is actually also paying tax in return for the benefit that society gets from granting to the shareholders the benefit of limited liability from which they otherwise only get an upside. Well, tax is the price they should pay for that. So we need to think hard about limited liability and we need to control it. The balance has gone completely wrong in the UK. Almost all the benefit is now with the shareholders. Very little is to society at large. We don't know enough about companies. We don't know they pay their taxes. And as a consequence, this is an issue that needs rebalancing. It's something I'm going to be returning to, but it really matters because you shouldn't be bearing the cost of other people's risks. I'm Richard Murphy. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this video series on YouTube if you're interested. Also look for us on Facebook. I am on Twitter, at Richard J. Murphy. And at the same time, look at my blog, Tax Research UK, where you can find much more on these themes. And I'll see you again soon.